Hello, everyone. I think we have a very interesting guest uh, for our next session. Uh, he has been building innovative solutions that really enhance uh, health outcomes globally, making an impact on patient lives across the world. Uh, one of the first few kind of a vertical SaaS companies to really tip the magical uh, triple digit million dollar number from India getting into on the US side. So genuinely a, a true testimony to the name of the summit which is uh, India Alpha. And uh, one fun fact about uh, this person uh, who I'll invite is, I think he's been so enthusiastic about, about Bitcoins that he, you know, pretty much coded a Bitcoin miner and installed it in his basement. So on that note, uh, please welcome uh, Abhinav. Uh, he's the co-founder and CEO of Innovesa. Good investment. <laughs> Great. Uh, so, Vinav, thanks for thanks for being here. You know, uh, I would I would straight away jump into some some interesting questions, and and your story is is so much aligned to what we are really trying to share with our friends over here, which is about this entire India US corridor and creating that India Alpha in the US. So I think we'd, we'd love to maybe start with, you know, if you could share your experience around how Innovesa started off and leveraged Indian talent and the startup ecosystem in India, and then built globally relevant uh, healthcare solutions. And in, in your view, you know, what are the advantages of uh, being based in India when you started off with and offer, you know, uh, these solutions uh, in US and globally? Yeah. Uh, uh, sure. So, so I think like. Uh, we started when we were very young, right? Like we were 23 years old when we, 23, 24 years old, like when we started off the business. And uh, we've sort of like been a global business from day zero, uh, right? Like I, I had worked like two years with this company called Ingersoll Rand, like it's a fairly large manufacturing business. I worked in their product and engineering uh, like uh, teams. And uh, a large part of what I basically did was like actually build out like a technology product work between China, India and the US. Uh, and really built something which was like for India by India. Like we had like a 5,000 people like team in India at that point, uh, um, which was building solutions or uh, products for the US market. And uh, uh, and like I did my internship, third year internship with them, like, um, and uh, they said basically, why don't you sort of really like build up something, uh, a report or something that uh, would like be like, what can we do for India? Like, uh, and so I wrote that report, it was a 300 page report on why India is basically going to be like, I think like uh, the next sort of like consumer market and uh, and they decided to sort of like invest $50 million and I was like offered a job like to be the chief of staff of the person that was going to be hired to be build that business. Uh, uh, and it was like such a fun experience. Like I worked between like I understood like I think like if you can think it, you can build it, right? Like uh, we thought of like I think ideas on like how we're connected uh, uh, ecosystem could sort of like look like what, how IoT devices can sort of like connect. What is cloud mean? Like what does mobility mean? And uh, and all of these things were basically like I think uh, being done by global companies. And uh, so I, I was sort of like in that very short three-year period, we basically built out a product. We took out a consumer product out in the market, and we got it to like ten million dollars of revenue. Uh, so I was like, okay, great. Like this is like so easy. Like uh, <laughs> why, why don't I sort of like do this on my own? Uh, uh, so I went to like I think the then CEO of Ingersoll and India um, and said like I want to go leave and like um, and like build something on my own and like he was kind enough to basically give us like fifty thousand dollars of his own money and uh, uh, and like call up all of his friends including like then uh, Google India CEO like uh, uh, like uh, Rajan and like uh, and then we reached out to few of our seniors from Kharagpur. Uh, all of them basically came together, gave us like two and a half, three million dollars. And like uh, India's three million dollars like goes such a long way. Like how much Maggie can you eat like in that, right? Like so, uh, so we, we were like super excited. Like I think we, we just said like this is just so much more money than we ever thought we would. We would put this in bank account and like leave of interest, right? Like uh, uh, <laughs> and so like uh, it was like naivety to like another sort of like extreme, I would say. Uh, uh, but like it worked, right? Like I think uh, we then started building out like a product, uh, um, a data warehousing product. Like uh, uh, I think what what Ingersoll Rand sort of like taught us quite a bit was um, like 
was one was like I think like you can build high quality products. Like frankly, it was happening out of India. Right, like uh, most of the engineering of what you had sort of like built was happening out of India. So like we knew we had like fantastic software people. Like we. Uh, had great design talent, uh, and we hired like 18, 19 year olds uh, out of like I think like these, like all, all across the country I would say right. Like I think like we hired from like um, colleges in Chennai. We uh, actually hired uh, people from uh, MIT or JP and uh, like some IITs too, right? Like but like IITs is not in budget generally. Like. Uh, uh, and uh, and so like uh, so I think we hired like a lot of these people and like these 18, 19 year olds like had the skill like uh, so we built out I think like what we uh, our first product was this how do you integrate like the ETL layer and like a warehousing layer and open it up like as APIs so that like you can do like software application build out on top of it like everyone was sort of like I, I think like if you look back like what we had created then was like the early version of what Snowflake ended up becoming um, right like I still feel like our product was better than Snowflake but that's another story like uh, 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 and so, so so I think like we uh, like I think built that out we basically took that to market like uh, and, and, and I think like go to market understanding for us was fairly limited. Um, uh, so, so we started going to universities of all people because like 22 year old in like IIT kids only know one thing like uh, foreign training basically castle. Right? Like so like if you email professors like you sort of like get a response and you would sort of like get uh, uh, them to pay you $5,000. Our general thing was like these guys have so much money like to give to like uh, training people they need sort of like data infrastructure to basically run a lot of those things. Uh, so we sent out mails to like all of these professors and we got 65 of the top 100 research institutions Harvard, MIT, Stanford, everyone to sign up, right. At the end of like a year and a half from then we were making a million in ARR, right. Like, uh, um, and this is like 18 months in, uh, into like the business we definitely knew at that point we had built something which was good, uh, right. Like. Uh, but we also understood, I think, uh, that uh, a professor, like, just selling it to academic institutions is not going to sort of, like, really build a great business out of it, right? Like, uh, TAM is small, like, we can't sort of really, like, I think, TAM, like, we got an understanding of what TAM means practically, right? Like, I think most of my learnings, basically, in life have been fairly practical, like, uh, uh, because, like, in India, there was no one to basically tell you, like, what all of these things like we are talking about 2014, right? Like uh, software, like we went to investors basically asking for money. They were like, in software company, why are you building out of India? Like, right? Like, uh, um, and like, it's true. Like there was, wasn't like a lot of like examples of that, like at that point, right? But like, I think like our general thing, thing was like, so we also come to college. Like, uh, right? like uh, uh, so, so, so I think like from that perspective, like we were fairly confident of the fact that like uh, we could do it. Uh, uh, and um, and so like um, we built out like uh, the next version and we were like then in New York uh, selling to like Fortune 500 companies. Uh, we got Disney, Walt Disney NASA, a lot of them basically as customers. Uh, uh, and year two and a half, like let's say like two and a half years into it, like and then like we were five million in ARR. Like we got like a lot of these. Uh, uh, customers, everyone liked the product. The only challenge was like when we went into these CIO rooms, like everyone was asking, "Where is your manager?" Right? Like it is like 23 year olds, like disheveled, like shabby, like looking like kids would sort of like go pitch to Fortune 500 companies. Like that was sort of like the challenge. Uh, uh, but then I think we understood what sales motions are, like how the US sort of like operates, like what is like I think like the motions uh, around all of those sort of like things and. Uh, and like I think uh, also at that point we started realizing that um, you, you really have to like know your space, right? Like uh, because Disney's needs and Walter Stewart's needs and NASA's needs, uh, everything is so different. Like uh, and we were building a data product at the end of the uh, like uh, day. So, so, so we then decided that we are going to we took a fairly unconventional sort of like decision at that point that we are going to shut down all of our business and go focus on one industry, right? Like, uh, um, because if you're going to build like a great business, uh, like it's got to sort of like be um, uh, like one scalable, but also basically like I think um, like good, we did, and we didn't want to do so. So I think that was sort of like where we uh, decided to pivot into being a vertical software company and just focus on 
one industry which was healthcare and because healthcare did not have like a great technology coming out in the last 20 years in the US and the mark like the US spends like four and a half trillion dollars on healthcare which is larger than India's GDP like so so you can't really have like I think that kind of industry and not really have uh, um, like uh, a, a sort of uh, like great software company come out of it uh, so that was the intent we then uh, did that like um, over the last six seven years we've gone from zero to hopefully this year a couple of hundred million in ARR uh, probably the fastest growing vertical software company ever uh, not in India, like this ever, right? Like, so, so that's sort of like I think like uh, where we are, and like we're fairly bullish that this is going to be a billionaire our business, like fairly soon. So thanks. That's a very very inspiring story, and uh, generally I think it really sets a tone for emerging entrepreneurs and building businesses. Uh, my next question, I think uh, I would have to include the word AI. Yeah, sure. Yeah. If we are in modern view. So, a couple of two parts to this question. One is how does this impact uh, you know, your business on the healthcare SaaS side? The second, which is a little more controversial part, you know, do you, how do you see India play a part over there? Do you see you know, the talent pool in India lead to build, building India as an AI hub? Or do you see value pretty much eat everyone's lunch when it comes to India? So, 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 my general view on this is like I think like everyone is wrong about AI right now. Like, uh, uh, like everyone is wrong. Like, I think like everyone thinks OpenAI is like I think where the maximum value creation is going to sort of like happen. I think that is just the minimum viable, minimum like value creation opportunity. Like, I think it is a fairly commoditized space. Like at um, at, at this point, like I think LLMs are like incredible and it's great that they were able to sort of like put this into production. But I, I think like that's the lowest value add thing that is happening right now. Like a lot of value creation is basically going to happen upstream from here and like the application layer is still to sort of like be built. Like uh, if you look at, like at SaaS, like I think 80-90% uh, of the value creation basically happens over the infrastructure, layer, right? Like 10% like great SaaS companies are all like 80% uh, gross margin, uh, half of like I think like the COGS is generally cloud, which is which means 10% of like I think uh, the value creation is happening like I think on the infrastructure layer and 90% value creation is basically happening on the application layer. Uh, that I think like is going to be even more severe in uh, healthcare. So, so I uh, or like I think like in any of these uh, like application layers. So, so enterprises are still getting their heads around like what is the application of AI like um, in like so many different ways. We basically like uh, we will be launching like seven co-pilots this year, right? Uh, we think like every person who is in a job is going to have a co-pilot. Like, uh, so like everyone from a driver is going to have a co-pilot to basically the doctor uh, having a co-pilot to like all variety of jobs are basically going to have a co-pilot um, over a period of time. Like, and then like I think like it converts to agency over a period of time, but like uh, uh, I think like uh, co-pilots are basically the first version of what we are going to see as value creation. Some of that has started to sort of like happen in healthcare and like uh, other industries. I think like bio plus AI is going to be the biggest unlock. Like I think the next trillion dollar business is going to be a bio plus AI business. I don't think like it's a open AI business. Like uh, uh, right. Like uh, so I think the opportunity set like in bio plus AI is fairly large and like I think uh, we are in early stages of seeing like what that can sort of like be. And uh, we're just very excited about, I think, the opportunity set that uh, is in front of us. Thanks. I think one, uh, one interesting question, uh, in which you know, interests some people over here for sure is, we'd love to have your view on, as you build from India for global, especially when it comes to GTM and product development in the US, what have been your learnings? What are the do's and don'ts? What you would have done differently or would advise others to do? I think especially on GTM and product development for US products while you know building it starting from India. I think that would be good to have your views. I think software is a global business, like to start off with. Like uh, I, I think like people who are basically doing like just regional thinking on that, like it's it's going to be a struggle. Like uh, right, like I think like all great software businesses are going to be fairly global. It could be Atlassian from uh, like Australia, or it could basically be like whatever, like um, Slack from here, right? Uh, but all of the founders that have basically succeeded in building like great products uh, have basically whether they are American or Indian or Australian or uh, 
like whatever, uh, um, like um, they've just thought about things like in a very global sort of like approach. Uh, and like we've just been lucky in that sort of like way that we took a global first approach, uh, like from the get go. And Girish is a great example of that. Like he never built a product for India. Like uh, it was just always basically, I think, like a global approach. And and I think like forget about like I think like India. Like if you're just going to play like I think like the software play, you have to be global from day zero, uh, right? Like and that's the way to basically build a large business. And also, I feel if you are in India. I think moving to the US or like spending, if US uh, is basically going to be like a large market, just spending a lot of time here, there is no, nothing that would sort of like beat that. Nothing that beats that. And I, I still see like, I think like founders trying to basically like keep Pele India and like all of those sort of like things. That just doesn't scale. Like I think if you're not close to the global customer, if you're not understanding the needs, uh, like revenue, SaaS is a hard business to like I think like get to scale, um, right? Like, uh, and if you don't basically like be in the market that can sort of like really give you a large amount of revenue scale, you're going to struggle. Like I think like um, uh, because growth rates are not going to be there, then value is not going to be there. What you need as investment, you can't basically put in. It's just this vicious cycle, like in uh, software. So I think like our general view has sort of like been that the thing that has helped us. Uh, a lot more is that the day we started the business, like the next day we were in New York, uh, like, uh, and 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 I think like if you're not like I think like you're losing out on an opportunity to sort of like build for like global scale from day zero. Thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Bravo there, and I would say we we were doing a lot of crystal ball gazing in the first half of the uh, session today, and we have 500 billion as market cap of tech business in India, expect to grow to massive scale of. Could be three billion dollars. Yeah. What do you think is going to be one final question? What, what do you think is going to be percentage of uh, SaaS in that? I think probably 16% is going to be innovator. Like, uh, like, uh, 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 so, like, uh, uh, so I think like we, we really have an opportunity to build like a large business. Whether we are able to execute or not, like I think like it's still to be seen. But I think like we have an opportunity to sort of like be like a large business over a period of time. But uh, uh, but also the fact that um, I, I really feel like um, the largest companies in the US are software and today India's largest company is Reliance which is not a software business. I think like over the next decade like that is going to change. Either Reliance is going to become a tech company or another tech company is basically going to become larger than Reliance. So, uh, it's just going to happen. Like um, and, and so like uh, I think like in this decade or decade, whatever we sort of like, I think like call it, like uh, we're going to see the largest market cap businesses be like tech and software businesses. Uh, um, and we are hopeful that we basically end up playing like a big role in that as well. So great, uh, super exciting talking to you, really chill for the future. Many thanks for the sign. Great. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you so much.